All right, YouTube. Today we've got two blocks which are connected by a string. And we're gonna pull on those blocks over here with an outside force, which is gonna cause them to accelerate. And in this problem, we're gonna solve for the tension in the string which is connecting the two blocks together. Now this problem can be split up into two parts. In the first part, we're gonna solve for the acceleration of the entire system, that is both blocks. And then in the second part, we're gonna solve for the tension in the string connecting the blocks. Now the problem tells us the mass of both blocks as well as how hard we're gonna pull on the string over here. And solving for the acceleration doesn't have to be that hard, but it depends on one key idea. You see, the first thing we need to realize is that it doesn't matter how far apart these two blocks are located. If I was to move these blocks over here, the string would be longer, but that wouldn't affect the outcome of this problem. Or if the blocks were located very close to each other, that wouldn't affect the outcome of this problem. We still have the same input force and the same masses. So if the string which is separating the two blocks or the length of that string doesn't matter, what if there was no space between these two blocks or there was no string at all? See, that wouldn't affect the acceleration of the system. We haven't changed the mass and we haven't changed the total force acting on the system. And if that seems confusing, let's go a step farther. Imagine these two blocks were actually just one large block. We know the total mass of the block as well as how hard we're pulling on this block. So to solve for the acceleration of the system, we're simply gonna apply Newton's second law. Now the problem tells us we're pulling with a force of 12 Newtons, and the two blocks combined have a total mass of six kilograms. So solving for acceleration, we find the blocks would accelerate at two meters per second squared. That means if I pull on this string, these blocks are gonna accelerate to the right at two meters per second squared. And backing up to our original block setup, we still have the same external force of 12 newtons acting on the same mass of six kilograms. That means these two blocks, even though there's a string between them, are gonna accelerate at two meters per second squared. And now that we know the acceleration of these two blocks, we can move on to part two to solve for the tension in this connecting string right here. You see, if we know this green block is gonna accelerate to the right at two meters per second squared, then we can solve for the net force on this block. Again, using Newton's second law, we know the two kilogram block is gonna accelerate at a rate of two meters per second squared. So the net force on the green block is four Newtons. Now sure, the net force is four Newtons, but how's that relate to the tension in the string? You see, it's easy to get confused because we have two different pull forces here. There's the pull force from me actually yanking on the string with a force of 12 Newtons, and then suddenly we're seeing this net force of four Newtons acting on the block. But realize, what's happening is as I pull on this string, some of that force is being transferred into this red block. Some of it is passing through the red block and being transferred to the green block. That 12 Newton pull force isn't directly acting on the green block. It's only the tension in the string which is causing the green block to accelerate. Or to put it a different way, the tension in the string is the net force on the block. Which means the tension in the string connecting these two blocks is four Newtons. But it doesn't. You could say some of that force gets used up in making the red block accelerate. So I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.